This is Jupiter Today for the 1st of February, 2015. Jupiter Today is a daily podcast focusing attention on the dynamic Jupiter system for the purpose of monitoring activity. At zero hours UTC, EO begins the day in quadrant four, heading east. Europa starts the day in quadrant three, heading west. Ganymede is going to spend all day in quadrant two, heading west. And Callisto starts the day in quadrant four, heading east. This blue line is the line of sight to the Earth, and the gray line is the line of sight to the Sun. These two lines are getting closer and closer together as we move towards opposition on the 6th of February. At 6 hours UTC, EO has just moved behind Jupiter and is now in quadrant 1, heading east. Europa is very near its western elongation and will be moving into quadrant 4, heading east. At 12 hours UTC, EO is still in quadrant 1, heading east, getting close to its eastern elongation. And Callisto is about to be moving behind Jupiter from Earth's point of view. By 1800 hours, EO is now firmly in quadrant 2, heading west, and will be doing that the rest of the day. Europa continues in quadrant 4, heading east. And Callisto's now past going behind Jupiter and is now visible again in quadrant 1, heading east. And by zero hours tomorrow, Io is still in quadrant 2, heading west, but going to be moving in front of Jupiter, going to be transiting Jupiter tomorrow, early tomorrow. And Europa is going to be moving behind Jupiter tomorrow as well. Okay, the Apogeove and Perigeove graphs. This is the distance in kilometers between Io and Jupiter, and this is time along the x-axis. And as you can see, today we're lucky enough to catch Io at both an Apogeove and a Perigeove. The Apogeove takes place at 202 UTC. And that's going to be 423,527 kilometers away. That's the furthest point in Io's orbit around Jupiter. And at 2316, Io will move through its perigeove at a distance of 420,005.2 kilometers. Europa also goes through a perigeove towards the end of the day tomorrow at 2250 UTC at a distance of 665,003.9 kilometers.
Ganymede continues to move closer to Jupiter, going towards its perigove. Not quite there yet. And Callisto is moving slowly away from Jupiter, radially away, moving towards its apogee. Orbital ribbons. I've marked on here also the direction towards Earth and the Sun. These are the same orbits that we saw before, but now I've just connected the two points in time as Io goes around Jupiter and Europa goes around Jupiter. You can see that those two points connect and we get a interesting little structure there. To me it looks like a ribbon that's being twisted. And so there's the connection between Io and Europa and Io and Ganymede and Io and Callisto and then the other combinations Europa and Ganymede and Europa and Callisto and finally Ganymede and Callisto and putting them all together you get that which is a rather interesting shape decided to put some color into it give it a little bit more interesting shape and a little bit more depth and this is a project that I'm continuing with. This is a graphic showing all the connections between Io and Europa and Ganymede and Callisto over the next month. And you can see just the fascinating, beautiful patterns that are here. And you can actually see the orbits here. Here's Io's orbit, here's Europa's orbit, here's Ganymede's orbit, and here's Callisto's orbit way out here. And it's just interesting to see all the resonances and patterns that can be made. But this is the orbital connections over the next month. Okay, there will be four Jupiter satellite events over the next 24 hours. At 3.45 UTC, EO moves into the shadow of Jupiter. And at 6.13, Io reappears from behind Jupiter. At 10.49 UTC, Callisto moves into the shadow of Jupiter. And at 16.54, Callisto reappears from behind Jupiter. There is one satellite mutual event today. And that goes from 2145 to 2154 UTC, and that's when EO is going to eclipse Callisto. This is an 8.6 minute event with an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.379 magnitudes. Callisto will be 46.55 arc seconds from Jupiter, and EO and Callisto are 11.18 arc seconds apart. And the Google Earth graphic is showing the position on the planet Earth where Jupiter will be at the zenith at the time of this event. And so this shows the visibility of this event. And all of Europe will see it, a lot of Asia will see it, and it looks like all of Africa is going to be able to see this as well. There were some new images posted on the internet over the past 24 hours. Just run through them here. There's also some new radio data taken yesterday, the 31st of January, at the UT time shown. And there were no new papers. 
At zero hours UTC, the position of Jupiter on the celestial sphere is a right ascension of 9 hours, 23 minutes, 40.8 seconds, and a declination of positive 16 degrees, 17 minutes, 4.4 seconds. The angular separation between Jupiter and the Sun, as seen from Earth, is 173.325 degrees, and that's 1.136 degrees greater than what it was yesterday. The phase angle, which is the angle between the Earth and the Sun as seen from Jupiter, is 1.229 degrees, and that's 0 0.208 degrees less than what it was yesterday. The distance between Earth and Jupiter continues to get shorter and shorter as we move towards opposition in just a few days now. Today it's 650,844,351 kilometers. And that's 273,179 kilometers less than what it was yesterday. And that gives a relative velocity between Earth and Jupiter of 11,382.46 kilometers per hour. And that's 1,952.92 kilometers per hour less than what it was yesterday. The distance between the Sun and the Earth is 797,422,512 kilometers, and that's 46,590 46, kilometers greater than what it was yesterday. Jupiter is radially moving away from, Ju from the Sun, and that's at a velocity of 1,941.25 kilometers per hour, and that's 2.42 kilometers per hour less than what it was yesterday. The central meridian at zero hours UTC, CM1, 275.92 degrees, 334.87 degrees is CM2, and CM3 is 241.87 degrees. The time of this recording is zero hours 48 minutes UTC on the 1st of February, 2015. So please subscribe, would enjoy hearing your comments. I'm always trying to make improvements on this podcast, trying to give different perspectives on the very dynamic Jupiter system. So you can send your comments and questions and suggestions along with any images that you take to the email shown. And until tomorrow, I bid you peace.